Good evening, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Tuesday's end of days trading, the uh, 29th of November 2016. Please be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the uh, Google Play Store and the Apple's App Store. Okay, now let's look at the actual numbers for the day, finishing in European session. You had the FTSE actually reverse towards the end of the session, pretty impressively. Finished towards 6772, down 27 points. The DAX actually finished higher, up 37. CAC finished higher, Eurostox finished higher, and that was mainly due to the FTSE MIB, up by more than 2% today. So the uh, ECB certainly has stepped in and uh, provided a lifeline for uh, the Italian banks and uh, for Italy itself, stating that they will be uh, they will act as a backstop and actually buy Italian bonds to neutralize any um, any fallout. And that certainly seems that hedge certainly seems to have worked today because it certainly led to a, an epic short squeeze uh, on the Italian banks with the Monte di Pace up by almost 15 16 percent at one time. And it was actually um, limit up, so we actually stopped trading. So impressive, impressive uh, to say the least. And that's uh, certainly has caused the uh, European markets to uh, to uh, certainly pause in terms of selling uh, and uh, certainly starting to reverse. Now, the FTSE itself was hit due to OPEC, uh, the OPEC certainly has failed to agree. Uh, with the Iraqis and the Iranians stating that they are not going to cut, and uh, the reason why is because the Saudis are not going to take the burden of the uh, the actual uh, OPEC uh, deal itself. And uh, the latest tweet I could think is uh, is uh, is the tweet that I refer to in terms of the reason why uh, the Saudis are taking that position is because of this new potential ruler, and uh, he's certainly taking a hard line or hard stance. In terms of US data, that certainly has moved the market. You had a stronger GDP data today. A UK, US GDP certainly came in stronger than expected. Okay, um, We had uh, personal consumption stronger than expected as well, so that certainly helped to a large extent. Uh, Red Book as well, certainly stronger. Home prices, etc., certainly stronger. So uh, disposable income and consumption numbers stronger as well. Consumer confidence data stronger as well. And also Cyber Monday sales certainly came in. Uh, the uh, Cyber Monday sales, biggest online shopping day in U.S. history. So all that certainly has been helping the Nasdaq, helping the uh, U.S. markets to a large extent. But they are still lagging. The reason why I say they're lagging, if I just bring up the S&P 500 chart, price action will be able to explain everything to you. You can see here in the 10-minute chart, we've still yet to fill the unfilled gap at 22.14. Struggling at 22.10, 22.09. Okay, so certainly lagging here. A daily chart as well, although we are above the previous resistance, so just bear that in mind. 60 minute chart certainly seems to be making a potential HS formation, so a right shoulder at Fib 75%, and therefore looking to start to move lower. Okay, now uh, again, the uncertainty regarding OPEC certainly is a bearish factor, but the markets or US markets certainly have taken that in stride, and it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. Now, we do have Mr. Dudley. And uh, Mr. Powell speaking today. We have API data as well later on. So all of those factors certainly will be uh, interesting and uh, will certainly give us a direction of the markets. But given the fact that uh, we have oil prices lower, that does indicate risk aversion. And uh, therefore, you are looking at <coughs> a sell-off in the markets, especially with Italian concern in the background, although they have been allevi alleviated to a large extent with this potential ECB intervention. And whether or not that lasts is a different question altogether. Okay, so... Let's look at the actual uh, technical picture now. Now the, now, the economic data in Europe itself today was weak. We had uh, services sentiment, industrial confidence, economic sentiment, business climate, all coming in on the weaker side. So again, looking at a potential risk off. So let's see exactly where we stand. Let's bring up the German DAX first and foremost. Let's bring up the daily chart here, the German DAX. Certainly a positive day on the daily chart, still languishing below 10,800. We're basically revisiting the actual H&S neckline now. So whether or not we can sustain our move higher and negate the neckline and go towards gap fill at 10,700, or we respect the trend line, or shall we say neckline, and we start to reverse and start to move lower. That's the question that you need to ask yourself, okay? That really is a question we need to ask ourselves. Do we respect the neckline and start to trade lower on this lower high, given the fact that we made a lower low at 10,550, or do we actually thrust higher and negate the h and formation and actually start to close the gap at 10,700 and potentially even make a new high? Again, that's up for debate, okay, up for debate. 10-minute chart, the German DAX itself, you do have a potential inverted head and shoulders, so it's bear that in mind, okay, so given the fact that you certainly put in a double bottom, okay, <clears throat> excuse me, certainly have put in a potential double bottom already, okay, so given the fact that you put a double bottom, you're looking for a higher high, and again, you do have the um, uh, unfilled gap above, so again, uh, multiple scenarios on the, on the bullish side and the bearish side as well. 
But given the fact that the Nasdaq itself is into resistance now, my bias is bearish. Currently, have a short position on the Nasdaq as well. Uh, currently, short FTSE as well. So certainly looking for downside or weakness on the uh, on the actual market at present. So let's see if that unfolds. I mean, if I move to the uh, the weekly chart here on the Nasdaq, you can see that we are facing a, a hitting key resistance here now, 4890. Uh, there's no real catalyst. I mean, you can use Cyber Monday sales as a catalyst, but is that really one? Okay, so again, you're closing the gap. You're into gap fill resistance on the Nasdaq now, and therefore you are looking at resistance. You can see here we've certainly closed it. And again, that is the uh, sufficient enough for proof from my perspective that we are certainly going to move lower. Okay, now let's move on to the French CAC now. Let's see exactly how the CAC is certainly trading now. The daily chart, the CAC itself, and it's bullish engulfing, impressive on the daily chart. You did have strong economic data in the morning for, for the French CAC. We had, um, if I can recollect, the French data this morning, GDP came in in line, and you actually got a beat in terms of consumer spending. So that certainly helped the French CAC to a large extent. Although, having said that, we're still below the neckline. Just bear that in my mind now. We have key resistance here on the French CAC at the uh, 4550 zone. Okay, 4550, 4560. If we break above that, then 4570, and then off we go to the races upside, and we do have a short squeeze on the HS formation. So just bear that in mind. Obviously, be flexible. Stop losses in. Okay, now in terms of uh, the market itself, you are into gap fill resistance, so 4550 is key resistance for the French CAC, and therefore you one would conclude from there that you are going into risk aversion. Okay. In terms of the FTSE 100, let's see exactly where this stands now. Looking at the daily chart here, the FTSE. Now, you clearly have this H&S formation on the weekly chart and the daily chart. You clearly see that as well. So, again, the argument here is that we have a OPEC failure. Okay, oil prices are already languishing at 45. We start to move lower and then FTSE 100 drops with it. In terms of oil, let's just bring up the price of oil. I'll show you the oil prices certainly are vulnerable to moving lower. Although they are holding that $45 level at the moment. Uh, the daily chart certainly shows you that you have an unfilled gap that needs to close at 44. So if that gap closes, you are looking at risk aversion in equities and equity prices moving lower. So bear that in mind. Okay, that certainly is something to consider. Okay, now in terms of uh, the FTSE 100, again, let's just go quickly go back. Uh, your weekly chart, we already know it's a h &S formation. OPEC failure certainly is a catalyst for that h &S to be triggered. Uh, the daily chart itself, we did actually bounce off that key support at uh, 6, 7, 30 impressively. We've actually managed to bounce almost 50 points for that low. So again, let's take that on board. Potential topping tail, take that into consideration as well. The lower channel certainly has held. Okay, although I was quite expecting it to continue down to 6, 7, 15 but, and potentially even lower given the fact that oil prices has, have been absolutely obliterated. But that hasn't been the case. Okay, so you need to respect that as well. Okay, moving on to the 10 minute chart, the FTSE 100, you certainly have resistance here around the 6, 7, 70. Certainly not expecting it to break above there. Now, again, the question is, can, are we going to make a potential inverted head and shoulders formation now? I didn't expect this move. I was expecting this move down here and then potential bounce. So I was looking for 6, 7, 30 to hold us double bottom. And then I was looking to potentially go long, but <clears throat> that didn't transpire, unfortunately. didn't give me the opportunity to either. So again, interesting, interesting scenario. Let's see exactly how this unfolds. It should be interesting in terms of the uh, FTSE 100. Given the fact that oil prices are languishing at 45, it's going to be very hard. I mean, it's very hard for me to even justify this green candle, but it occurred. Okay, there could be a number of reasons, whether individuals are front running the uh, potential oil policy decision overnight and then expecting a gap higher, etc. etc. There's a number of reasons. Okay, we did have Aberdeen Asset Management as well under pressure today, so again, bear that in mind. You do have a cable at 1.25. Again, that's you know the factor as well. Stronger cable hurts the equity market. So a weaker oil price, stronger cable, that certainly isn't uh, a good ingredient for a rally. So let's just take that on into consideration as well. Okay, and last but not least, Euro stocks. Let's just give you an insight there in terms of Euro stocks. Okay. Here we go, Euro stocks. Okay, so Euro stocks still has the HNS formation. So again, that certainly hasn't been negated. So your left shoulder here. Obviously, your head is here, and then obviously you're looking for a right shoulder here, then looking to flush. Okay, so looking to flush down to uh, 2960, 2940, sorry. So again, looking for risk aversion, okay. Uh, we do have an unfilled gap above, so just be made aware of that. You do have an unfilled gap at 3048. We're currently trading. We did actually get to 3040 after hours. So again, an argument there to be made that we are looking to potentially close that gap, and we have closed it, and therefore you are looking for resistance at 3048, and therefore looking to move lower, okay. And that's the uh, argument that I've certainly put forth as well. Stronger economic data today certainly hasn't resulted in a stronger dollar, which is kind of strange. Okay, so again, it's actually resulted in a weaker dollar. So 
Again, that's a bit of a conundrum, and I need to work that out in terms of the what the implications are. But for now, uh, European equity is still into resistance. The bullish move from the ECB certainly baked in, and it'll be interesting to see how oil prices obviously react in the next 24 hours and how equities react as well. In terms of the NASDAQ, I think the NASDAQ will be key. If we actually break out above this 4,900, it's very bullish for the NASDAQ. I'm very, very bullish for the DAX as well. I can't see that happening, given the fact that the DAX obviously has, has, has remained below 10,800. And the DAX and the, and the NASDAQ certainly do work in tandem. So certainly isn't enough <coughs> or bullish enough economic data at present to, uh, to actually force us to press higher. On that note, please be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye.